learn how to make things work. And so for me, no has never been an option when it means to be able to enjoy things, even if you had, whether it be a food allergy or any kind of dietary restrictions, that kind of was a challenge for me to start tasteful so that when it came to desserts, no one would be able to say, well, I can't eat that because it's got gluten or it's got, I wanted it to be something that everyone could enjoy. So it was like a challenge for me, but at the same time, it allowed me to serve my family a little better. Um, I've worked in food for probably like 15 years, and what really inspired me was uh, working for a woman in the Harbor. It was Saba. She was um, just she started from a very young age, 23, and really like took a risk in the food industry. Um, and seeing her kind of create this insane company and bring hospitality to Ann Harbor in such a unique way. Um, and seeing a woman do it at such a young age was super inspiring. I loved working with her and I loved seeing the community, community that she created around food. So that was probably the greatest inspiration for me to continue working in food. So I know we have a lot of young culinary students in the crowd tonight, a lot of people that have been in the food industry a little bit. Um, do you guys want to speak on kind of, did you do any culinary training prior to going into the industry? Um, was it just all on the job experience? How did you really come to formulate the position that you're in now? Uh, for me, I, I did go to school. Um, uh, for cooking, I actually dropped out of high school. Um, so it started just as it was a necessity. Needed to make money. I was 16 years old, so I started working in a college cafeteria and really quickly got taken under the wing um, of a chef there who was awesome, Tim. And he kind of just kept throwing me into, you know, the thing, you know, like, hey, 17 year old, you ever cooked like 100 uh, grams of lamb perfectly? And no, obviously, I haven't done anything. Well, you have one hour. So <laughs> it's kind of how I started, and I think I kind of just got like addicted to that. I thought it was fun and it's fun to prove yourself. So I think for me, it was all just on the job training. It was, I, I don't know, I just kind of like got addicted to the chaos and the never, like, never be able to stop anything. Just can't, you know. You'll never be the greatest, you'll never know everything. I think that's what really inspired me uh, to get into this and to stay in it. So, as I mentioned, I grew up in the kitchen at Carlos, but I didn't go to culinary school. Um, my mom always encouraged us to follow our passion, so I took minus and got my bachelor's in business administration. Um, my job I'm a dynamic duo, so I do the business management side, and my husband does the more day to day stuff. Um, so, when it comes to the business management side, I feel like the stuff that I learned in school is really geared towards big corporations, manufacturing, it's really different than the food industry. So, I still have a lot to learn, um, but I rely on really great organizations here in our events to kind of help me navigate that space. Um, you mentioned Mama at the beginning, so Star Garden has been a wonderful resource to connect me with people who have the answer that I don't. Um, Spring GR has also been a really wonderful resource for me um, to help me learn about managing my numbers and managing costs, which is like a big topic for everyone in the food space right now. So um, I'm still learning, and I'm excited to one day learn from all of you guys too. Pretty much the same way I feel that I'm still learning. I never was professionally trained in the culinary industry, so I have a lot of respect for those of you who are doing that now because I think it gives you an advantage, which I find myself a lot on YouTube University, like, okay, oh, yeah, you know, to play that. Okay, figure it out. You know, so I take real, um, and my background is an educator, an elementary educator, so education for me is important, and so I think that continuing to grow, I will learn more. Um, and I will say, and just kind of a little plug for the downtown market, I use the incubator kitchen space, and the support that I've gotten from the staff here has helped me in a lot of areas where it helped me to maximize the 
time that I was using my the equipment that they have available. So, you know, there would be times where I have my little blender and, you know, Brian and Beck would be like, okay, you can use this or you can use that. You know, making, making me aware of the resources that are available. So it's a steadily process of learning from me, but the support that you get from those that are here and the businesses that are available to support you is priceless. Um, I also did not go to culinary school, but it was much more like learning on the job um, and kind of thrown into, I did not have much experience with the kitchen or before I started with the job in, in Ann Arbor and just someone saying, okay, kill all those hard boiled eggs, which are all of them. It did not go well, but it's kind of like you grow and you learn and you pop those off. And so a lot of like, Education about food was just working in kitchens and with people, um, and I think you know I got the degree, and I think part of my education helped with problem solving, which is you know a lot of what I do day to day now. So I would say you know being educated and uh, I have an English degree, which is great, but you know it's not it's nothing compared to what I learned from working with chefs and. So I know that imposter syndrome, we all tend to have it some way or another, and specifically in food, there's no blueprint, there's nothing you can look up online when something goes horribly wrong, which it does pretty frequently. Um, so talk a little bit about, do you feel imposter syndrome? And if you do, how do you navigate that? Probably um, like right now. Um, <laughs> being here. Um, I think that Specifically for women, um, I feel like we tend to feel it a lot more. I think that sometimes when you know you start to get confident in your craft um, and you start to act confidently, sometimes people will take that as you being confident, and that's not what confidence is. But more often than not, like. I don't know, women just tend to get that label thrown at them a little bit quicker than men do when you're acting confidently. Um, so I think for me, um, imposter syndrome, I choose to use it as something that drives me instead of something that uh, can stifle me. So I, I don't know, no one's, like I said before, I'm never going to be the best at anything. That's fine, but I don't really want to be. I want to be continually adapting and learning and changing how I view people and food and how to be a good chef and to be a good manager and just a good person. So I think that everyone probably should have a little bit of imposter syndrome. That's just how I personally choose to look at it. Okay, so I know. <laughs> So yeah, so like when the invitation to join this panel, I was like, they are seriously confused, but I don't know. <laughs> um, and that's kind of how I navigate things since taking over this business has only been a year and there's been so many opportunities that have been presented to me. And in the moment I'm like, there has to be someone who's more deserving to me. There has to be someone who's better fit with this. But as a business owner, I see it as an opportunity to get my business out there for people to get to know me, and that's what motivates me to navigate through that. I don't think I will ever get over the imposter syndrome, but I just see it as an opportunity to grow my business, but also as an opportunity to learn. So, yes, every day. Thank you. Probably just do everything they say, because it was the same thing. Like, you're like, are you available to speak on my channel? I'm like, what? <laughs> so, you look at the opportunities that they presented for you, but then sometimes you kind of have that internal self-talk, like, but I'm not ready. But I think mean, honestly, you're never going to be ready unless you put yourself out there. Um, and I know, you know, sometimes it's, there's a saying, just do it afraid. So you may not know, you know, everything about um, whatever you're going into, but I, I think it's all about the experience. It's all about the journey. And I can't, I can't say just how, just how many times to just say yes to something that I didn't think I was prepared for opening the door for me to be in restaurants and to be a different vendor event. Um, I think the imposter syndrome happens here. 
And so until you can kind of get that in place and say, okay, you know what, I, I can do this, I'll say yes, I'll figure it out later, I'm going to say this right now. I agree with everything. Um, it was my favorite question on the list, honestly. Uh, I feel like it's something that we don't talk about, but then once you do talk about it with someone, it's this like moment of bonding that you've kind of acted like you know you've known what to do for so long when you really didn't. But I also think that that's such a big part of going into business or going into any job is kind of figuring it out as you go like an imposter, but then you get to a certain point where you feel like you've made it. Not that the imposter syndrome ever leaves us, but at a certain point you have to pat yourself on the back for like making it to where we are today. So it exists every single day. <laughs> yes, I, I also agree with all these answers. <laughs> I feel like every day as well. So yeah, it's good to openly talk about those things because we try to hide it so much because people expect so many things from you. And once you start to open up and talk about it, it's like, we all feel like this. So why, why are you feeling so weird about every little decision you make and everything you do? Now, what are some of the biggest valid challenges that you faced so far in your career and how did you overcome them? Well, every day is a challenge. Um, I think for me, it kind of goes back to the previous question about imposter syndrome. Um, uh, this was actually my hardest question to answer, and I really couldn't come up with like a single one thing or even like three or four things that were the biggest challenge. I think the biggest challenge is just like, Existing in this industry, I think that especially as as like a grinding your way up from the bottom line cook and a woman line cook at that, um, there's so many different factors and there's so many different things that I've had to overcome. That as far as I mean, sexual harassment is a huge thing. I've, it's happened to me. It's happened to plenty of my coworkers, plenty of stories I've heard. And that's huge, and I think that that tends to drive a lot of people out of the industry. It's hard. Um, it's hard to deal with, and it's hard to realize how commonplace it is. And I think that that's, pro that's probably the biggest challenge for me, is making sure that I speak up about those things, um, even if it gets me in hot water all the time, which it always has my whole career, but whatever. Um, so yeah, that's, that's a tricky one for me, but I think that it's important to talk about it when it happens, and yeah, I'm gonna leave it at that. <laughs> Thank you for speaking to that. Um, so mine doesn't seem like such a big challenge anymore, but um, when I took over this business, I had a vision, and I was like, what do you want to do? Like, what do you see this business turning into? And I was like, I want a tamale empire. I want to have a production facility, and I want to create jobs for my community, and our tried and recipe is a pork tamale. And that vision quickly turned into, so you have a meat product, and there's all these rules, and for lack of a better word, to my team. Um, and like you've met with lots of people and they're like, yeah, so do I see any certification? Like it's darn near impossible. Like I don't even think you should pursue it. Um, but instead of saying we're going to give up the stream, we decided to pivot. So we're working on developing a meatless recipe because I want to prove those people wrong that it's not going to happen right now or maybe in five years, but maybe in seven or ten, I will have a tamale empire and I will be the tamale queen. <laughs> um, I think for me it's the balance, the work-life balance, um, because in addition to running a uh, business, there are other things that we do, you know, and so those other things don't stop. So, you know, whether for me, um, being a wife, a mom, um, and owning a business, none of those has ever come off. So I think the challenge for me is how to balance with all of the hats. 
you know, you kind of feel like you're juggling and like you don't want any of them to drop, but you have to choose. It's like that family can't drop, but you, your business and your vision also becomes like your baby, like you want to see it succeed. Um, but then you also don't want to run yourself into the ground. And there is no nine to five in the culinary industry. There's, it's not like, okay, five to five, we're done, everybody's been served, we're going home. It is ongoing, and, and the hours can vary so many different times. I've been in this kitchen watching the sun come up and watching it go down. Um, but at the same time, just trying to manage and have a balance so that everything that is important to me remains um, successful and Um, I would say the biggest challenge we faced, um, just like in starting a career and you know, like moving into an ownership position, is retention of employees and how it's such a high turnover rate in the food industry. So how how do we create careers for people where they want to stick around and they want to stay on staff and they want to grow with their company? Um, I you know in hiring a lot of college kids when I was in the number I was like. What, what excites you to go for? Like, why do you want to be there? And what I found, 90% of people answer the people I work with, uh, which I find just so, just so true, first of all, but also a very like, real and interesting answer. So I feel like the struggle was like, how do we create this culture in our company to have people sit around and to grow um, with us? Um, not that I have an answer to that, but we you know, try every day to create a community and a culture within our company where people feel creative, feel valued, um, and want to show up to where you're doing the job and have fun. Yeah, I like, we always get a lot of different challenges with food because there are so many. And like we were saying, there's not one big challenge ever. It's all the little things that add up constantly. And so how do you deal with those on an everyday basis and really push it forward? And then we also mentioned a little bit about work-life balance, so that takes us into our next discussion of how do you balance your career, your personal life, all these things you have going on? Is it possible to have a balanced life in the food industry? Um, this is something that I only recently just started to figure out for myself. Um, and it's so, so important. Like, it's probably the most important thing, especially if in this industry. Um, I a lot of times was told to come up in restaurants that you need to clean up your personal life at the door to walk in. No matter what's going on, you need to clean up and you put on a smile and an apron and you just get to work. And I will challenge people to do the opposite of that. You don't work when you get home because so many times, like, I've had jobs where we all get out together, the only other one had put us in the frustration bar, and spent literally four hours just grinning and complaining and crying and bitching, and it just it's exhausting. And then you go to bed, and then you have nightmares about it. And then you all just stop. <laughs> Anything, just it's, And then you have to wake up and just do it every single day, and that's a miserable existence. Um, so I think that really, only after my last job, that was when it got really, really bad for me. And I realized that I, I physically and mentally just could not keep doing that to myself. And so I made a conscious effort to just find ways to, like, instead of bottling it all up while I would be at work and then just let it explode on the parking lot at home, I would be more open at work about the issues that I was having and try and get a little bit of those conversations out of the way instead of just walking out and going to hold on everyone. So it's, it's super important. And especially in this industry, I think drug and alcohol abuse are, as we all know, huge problems. And work-life balance is so important if you want to start tackling those issues that you have. So as I mentioned, my husband and I are a duo. So he does day day stuff, and I do the behind the scenes stuff. But I also have the most important job of keeping two humans alive. Um, 
So no, we do not have a good balance. Um, when we're together, we're talking about business, and if we're not talking about them, we're talking about kids. Um, so we aspire to that. I believe that it's someday really attainable. Um, but I feel like a challenge for us as the business owners is creating procedures in place so that our team can take care of our business while we're not there. Um, right now, we, if we're not there, it doesn't exist. So um, we're hoping to one day be able to take a day off and we take the kids to Disney. Um, but for right now, we're not there yet. I think probably the biggest part in the balance is being able to speak up and say, I need help. You know, sometimes in that balance, you just keep going and you get on autopilot and you realize you run out of gas and you haven't said, like, man, I need help. Um, and so being able to have a support system and a structure in place where you have people that, you know, kind of hold you accountable, like, did you eat today? <laughs> You know, do you need a nap? Like, I ask my kids that, like, like, mom, do you need one? I have it, you know? <laughs> so, but you have to be able to talk about things. And I think sometimes, kind of even going back to what you were talking about with the um, imposter syndrome, is like, we don't want to talk about it, and we want to be Wonder Woman, but Wonder Woman needs help. You know, we all need it, and we just have to be able to say it, otherwise we will go to those other, like, resources and things to try to kind of fill a gap, but at the end of the day, I'm still not doing okay. So I think being able to say, like, okay, help with this, my house, my dishes, that's never on Instagram for a reason. Like, I was trying to fix something together. And so just being able to say, this is what I need, this is how you can help me, is not telling people, like, this is what I need you to do for me. If you see me working eight hours a day, bring me an app, bring me something, or if you see this, Tell people how to help you too as you're going and trying to get this balance because sometimes people will think they're helping you and they've done nothing for you. You know, so be a I think being transparent, saying I need help and telling people how to help you can bring a little bit of that balance back in place because you can't you can't balance by yourself. I feel like that was very well said. I believe asking for help is so important and when you're in like the position of power or management, it's really hard to reach out to people. Um, I would say this was my least favorite question. It's, it's so hard to answer, especially when you know you're kind of running yourself into the ground, and that's kind of the industry. That's what we think that we should be doing is working constantly. Um, so I would say my best advice would be set boundaries. Like people respect you more when you set boundaries with them. Uh, whether it's like, I don't answer emails past six or seven, or don't call me on my phone past this time. I feel like that's probably the best advice I can give for like taking care of yourself, especially if you're working constantly. Um, otherwise, it's, it's a struggle, you know, when you're working and working hard and really believe in what you're doing and, you know, your expectations are so high, especially in this place you work in. So. Set boundaries. Yeah, I like what you said about setting boundaries because there have been times where it's Saturday morning, I'm trying to relax, and then I'm getting phone calls. I hear my sushi of laughing over the shoes. Um, and I'll get phone calls about just purchase orders that are not going to come in, what substitutions I want to make. So now I'm on the phone all morning long trying to figure things out. And then if something's out of stock, now I'm running around town trying to find it in the store so we can prep on Sunday. And it never stops, so it's, it's very hard to find that balance. So following that up, we talked a lot about balance, support, having people in your life. How do you think you can get support from other women in the industry, or how do you support other women in the industry? Super important. Um, something I wrote down when I was uh, trying to answer this question was like, you know, when the grandpa says, Why you so not to walk? I'll go all the way. He said, I can't just go on to a different model. Well, you shouldn't have to do that. That really sucks. And I think the way to support other women is like, Hey, just because this happened to me, like, it, it shouldn't happen to you, and I'm not going to, like, 
to punish you with that. Uh, I think that's super important is remember things coming up, especially in this industry, that were like on super unfair or harmful to you, and just don't continue on. Sorry, I have to look at the floor with the sun. Uh, just don't continue on those conditions. Like, let the bug stop with you. Um, because we, I, I think, especially um, after, you know, in the midst of the pandemic, everyone started kind of talking more openly about changing the culture um, because so many people were leaving the industry. And I think that, like, don't talk about it, be about it, change the culture then. Don't just say that to get people to apply to work at your restaurant. Like, be by example and actually like change it then. Um, and that's what I try to do with anyone I work with. And yeah, like that's probably in my line of work at least, that is probably the best way that I can support other women. Is just be better. Be the person that I wish I would have had. So for me, as I said, I'm still learning and I feel like we all are. And I've been very lucky and blessed to have women in my life and in my path who are in this industry. And when I ask a question, they do not skip a beat and they give me the answer. Um, it's all about collaboration over competition. I firmly believe that there is enough space at the table for all of us. And these women, in particular, Kaya Thorne Hunter, who is has her own spice company, who's amazing, and here locally, Jason and Amanda, they're both my mentors, and any time I've asked for anything, they point me in the right direction. And when you know better, you do better, so not that I'm learning from them, I want to be that for somebody. So when anyone comes to me, I don't want to be me. I want to make sure that you succeed. I want to succeed because there's enough room for all of us. I agree. I think that's one of the reasons that I was really looking forward to this too, because I think part of the yes is being able to say, okay, I can be a resource in some way to someone else, because there have been many women in the food industry that have just stepped in and took me under their wing and said, okay, this is this is something you can do, or try doing this differently, or source your products here, and I've never had that cold shoulder. I've never, I've never felt that, and so I have to look towards being able to be a resource for other women. And another thing that I do is I buy from women business owners. You know, there's just strategically sometimes I'm looking like, okay, I know they make they make jam or they make this, I'm gonna go buy from another woman owned business. I think that's super important. Uh, being each other's champion and kind of like supporting each other. Um, I feel like it's, you know, food, working in food um, gives us such a good opportunity to go around and be each other's cheerleader and champion. I feel like that's kind of where I felt super supported when I see another, you know, woman in town come into my business and maybe promote it or maybe talk about it. Um, I feel like that, that warms my heart so much and it makes me feel supported in what I'm doing. Um, so go out and support everything. All, all the things to support all of these women owned businesses. Yep, they're all right in front of you. So, what is one thing you wish more people knew about women working in the food industry? Once again, straight up, I think that um, it's not talked about enough how much sexual harassment there is in the restaurant industry. Um, it's everywhere. It's not in every place, but it's in a lot of them. And people, so, there's been so many times that you hear about it, once you hear about it, so many times you start to just kind of get, I think I got desensitized to it over time. Um, I could list so many examples, and I wrote so many of them down, I'm not gonna do that. But it's like, once I really put pen to paper and kind of started unearthing a bunch of things, Deep inside of myself, I was like, oh my god, like, it's crazy. It's, it's, it's crazy how unrare it is. I wish people knew what a struggle it is to persevere through that in a lot of industries, and, or in, in this industry. 
Um, yeah, sorry, I lost my train of thought It's 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 just wild. Um, sorry, I'm gonna skip the rest of this question. So for me, as a consumer and a business owner, and I've gotten to meet and be friends with a lot of women in the food industry, I wish people recognize, wish they recognize more how resilient women are. Um, we like just even just us casually talking. Started, some of the challenges that we're dealing with right now, labor shortages, cost of ingredients, you have to continually pivot. And we, I have seen so many fellow business owners come up with the most creative ideas because we don't have a choice but to keep going. Um, so I wish we got a little bit more impact for that. I think probably um, the resources that are available to us as women, um, that's what I'm always talking about. And there are a lot of resources available for us as women. Um, I know the grow, um, Michigan Women Forward, there are so many different resources, both education wise and funding wise, that are just sitting and waiting for us, but no one often talks about it. So that's a piece I think it's important to understand that we're not talking about enough of what's available to us. Um, I think I would want people to recognize kind of how it feels to be a woman sitting in a room full of men, which is oftentimes how we are in business meetings and, you know, dealing with contractors and dealing with build outs and things like that. And uh, a, a large imposter syndrome to sit in a room with a lot of men. Um, and to kind of overcome that is badass, and I think a lot of us have done that. And so I, you know, I would think uh, I would like that to be recognized more in the industry that it, it's tough sitting in a room with um, it feeling like an imposter in that way, and we shouldn't. But um, more recognition for that is, I think, what I would want people to recognize in the industry. Yeah. So then I have a follow-up question to that. Um, what are some changes that you would like to see for the food service industry that would better cater to women? Um, I think really important changes are, I think people need to be held accountable. Um, so, okay, let me just put it this way. Uh, so, I feel like a lot of times where I had something inappropriate or like really bad happened to me at work and I tried to go to a manager or an owner or someone in a position of power that could do something about it more often than not if the person that did something is someone with let's say it was a chef, let's say it was a GM, let's say it was someone that's a little harder to replace, people tend to be like, oh well it's that kind of sucks for me because bringing this to my attention that that might mean that I have to like right now I have to replace the shaft, now I have a, the GM or whatever and it's like if that makes you uncomfortable that you have to have these hard conversations then imagine how the person who like was on the receiving end of inappropriate treatment imagine how uncomfortable they felt so I think a change I would like to see is just like more like just have the hard, hard conversations and I think that people need to be held accountable when they you know harass people in the workplace and I know that it is hard especially right now to replace people but that sometimes has to be that's like just necessary sometimes and I think that also it's kind of it's a huge shame that people do feel so uncomfortable to come forward for those reasons and I feel like they're they're burden by learning up things that other people may not want to hear and when something happens to you at work you shouldn't have to feel like a burden you should feel like you're able to speak honestly and openly about those things and not be like just become kind of in the ass for everyone because you're not the person that did something wrong so I think more communication is really important, uh, especially in kitchens, um, you know, online, because it's 
is super common. So still being new to this game, um, I would really like to see more information out there for how to manage a business. Um, there's so many of us that I've met who are really good at their craft, they have an amazing product and amazing talent, but you can only get so far without being able to properly manage a business. Um, so having our business in the sea, and I know there's a lot of resources here, but I would like to see more resources along the lake shore. Um, because there is some really amazing products in our little hometown of Sweden, um, but I know that lots of them are underpriced, or that they could have better packaging, or are not, you know, like Google search terms, like what the heck, like how do I manage my business, you know, and get it out there. So I'd like to see a little bit more education, not specific bigger women, and more so on. Um, I think just even having something like this, um, being able to have a conversation about how to be successful and talking about the challenges, I think things like this help being able to have more settings where you can just be open and say, okay, these are the things that I start with, this is what I dealt with this moment, this is something, so that others don't have to experience that. I think the conversation needs to be had more for, for women. I agree with what everyone said here. I think part of it, part of what would help would be more positions for women in power and making change at a higher up position, allowing for your staff to have more power in situations of sexual harassment or maternity leave or just more understanding in the food industry for women. I think a lot of that change would come with women in higher positions. So a lot of great discussion so far. We're actually running short on time. So what I want to do now is open it up to you guys for a QA. and a um, We do not have a microphone to pass, so you'll have to yell at us. Let's go ahead and raise your hand, and I'll call on you and we can ask some questions. Yes. Hi. Uh, so I'm 27. Uh, when I was in my early 20s, I had some management positions. And at the time, it was like, oh my gosh, And now that I'm 27 and I'm in those positions, I'm much more confident and I can you like the surface and you grind the chicken for me. And I've met with a lot of resistance when I'm confident. So if you have any tips on how to get through that ceiling? Do you just keep doing it? Just keep doing it. That's far. People are gonna just perceive you the way that this is where I get comfortable. It's like people are just gonna perceive you the way that they're gonna just perceive you, and that's like a huge thing for me was finding my voice coming up and like, you know, I started swiping cards. I actually had Aquinas. Um, I worked there for like eight years at the cafeteria. Um, so moving up the ranks, you start getting more responsibility and eventually it became, you know, Pam and then a sous chef, and a sous chef again and again and again. And in chef, I feel like it was really hard for me to find my voice, but like once I did, just, just keep doing it. Like, just don't. People are going to think what they're going to think, but it's like it's not like you're screaming at them like to do something. Just like, hey, can you just do this? That's all you're saying. It's <laughs> they're going to take it how they're going to take it. Like just be you. I think for women, it's, it's harder for us to have difficult conversations. I don't think that conversation that you're having is very difficult, but um, just in general, like coaching someone, I think sometimes can be hard. Um, so I would agree with what you said, just keep doing it. You come off as very confident and very forceful, so keep doing it. Yeah, and I think when you're forceful and when you're bold, not being intimidated by what people think about, you know, what are they going to think about me if I tell them to do it? Well, that they would want to keep your job. You would do this, but that's not how you're saying it. But the confidence by which you say it and not really being moved by how people perceive you. Because I think it even goes back to the boundaries that you set. And if you establish a set of boundaries that this is how things operate when I run it, then people will also come up to that standard as well. If you set a high standard, they'll aim to reach that standard because then they also will see it in you. 
you know, I think that's the other thing sometimes people aren't willing to do it if they don't see that you can do it yourself, but sometimes people don't understand. I started where you started, so this is why I can confidently tell you you can do this. Yeah, I think those are all good points. It's uh, lead by example, um, and also managing people is so hard, and I mean, I guess the only thing, the other thing that wasn't mentioned is like, how do I find a different way to manage this person? How do I get them motivated to do their job? Um, which I don't have the answer for, but is another way to look at it, I would say. Yes, I have a question. Okay, hi. Um, okay, here's my question. Um, imposter syndrome, I love this conversation. As a woman in the industry, I. I think we all feel that way. This is a great deal. We all feel that way. <laughs> um, so I think part of that comes from the industry is like the fake it till you make it mentality that like, kind of almost everybody has. It doesn't matter if it's a woman or a man in this industry. We all kind of fake it till you make it at some point. But I know that that gives us like a, a central nervous system response, like that fight or flight, right? Sometimes when it gets triggered, that imposter syndrome. So in the kitchen or in the business as you're running it, what advice can you give to women when there's a problem? Like there's, you're in the weeds, things are going wrong. We all know like the uh, typical like chef throwing the pans and the things like this, and we're trying to change that culture. So what do you do when you're feeling like you're in the weeds to model for your team members how not to throw pans and freak out on people when you're having that? Because especially with having that imposter syndrome, I think we feel it even harder when things start going wrong, like it's our fault, right? Yeah. I think, um, from my experience a lot of the times is when you do, so I worked alongside a lot of pan throwers in my day, and I think that if I ever matched that energy in those situations, it wasn't seen as like, oh, it's just busy. It was always like, oh, you can't handle the old, your opponent, so it's like, oh, you just can't handle the pressure, as opposed to someone else, you know, my, my coworker, it'd be like, oh, he's just having a bad day. And it's like on the one on one side, I want to say like just don't just don't meet it with that same energy. Take a step back, but at, at the same time, it's like why do we have to act so much differently and tone ourselves down like to twenty five percent when we got an next and we have a hundred? Um, so that's a tricky one to answer. But once again, just like if someone's telling you like. You're gonna react how you're gonna react. When you double rail out, I don't know what's gonna come out of my mouth. You know what I mean? But like, I try to just keep a calm and just a calm demeanor because that's what I appreciate um, from any other person that I'm working alongside because when you act hot headed, it exacerbates everything. So just, like, just take a chill Just take a chill I feel like everyone's a super great answer, but um, my husband and I are very opposite personalities. So when I'm having a mental breakdown, it's like, we, we can't do this. Like, we, like, we have to show us a lot. So that's kind of just an attitude that we have tried to carry and show our team. So, like, we work with this restaurant. So our menu is not dynamic. Like, we consistently serve the same items all the time. So when one thing is out, like it could shut down 25% of the business. So it's like, okay, are we just gonna let this happen or are we gonna find another way to get through this? Um, so I feel like having a person who complements your personality. So I'm very direct, like I need an answer now, like you can figure this out now. My husband is more of a great personality, like mellow, like let's think this through, let's take a moment before we answer the question. Um, so I know not everyone has that luxury, but maybe finding someone on your team or a friend that you can like quick have that thought up with and then okay, regroup like this is what we're gonna do. And I think that in those moments too, like step back. Um, because sometimes when you step step back from the situation you're able to assess on a whole different level in that moment, you can be at ten and you might want to throw a game, you might want to say some calls and words, but if I step back for a little bit. Let me just assess how I can best utilize the skills. Because that's the other thing, too, is that, you know, with that imposter syndrome, sometimes you feel like well, I'm not the one that can be able to change the situation. But when you step back and you kind of identify, like, okay, we can handle this. If 
I'm more than qualified to make this situation work. Whatever I have to do, we can make it work. And I think that's the thing too, is when we want to be multi-hats, you know, there's so many different hats and things that we wear, so we have to take a step back for a minute and assess the situation. I think that helps you to realize that you're more than qualified to address them, but you just have to give yourself some time. And that's the other thing, like sometimes people want to answer from me right now. Like, I need you to tell me right now. You're not going to find out right now. You're <laughs> going to have to wait. I need a moment, and it's going to be okay. Um, yes, I agree with what everyone said. Uh, I think it's interesting to talk about the big hit to leave me in and imposter syndrome being like such side-by-side -side things um, and how we deal with problems, but it's also uh, in that sense we're all problem solvers, right? We kind of like faked it till we made it, but we solved the problems. So it's like, um, so I guess like trust yourself and that you can solve problems and find people who will be on your team who are also problem solvers and not problem starters, right? Like, I don't want to hear about what we're out of, figure it out, like that kind of thing. Is it people you want on your team? Because it's massive, um, those bills are not cheap. 
I can't really think about anything I would change. So there was one time where our power went out, so the freight elevator was up, so I had to carry up the angry dogs with the groceries by myself because I was our only employee at the time. So that's what I would change, but no, it's a it's a great it's a great community. And Ryan back there can definitely answer questions about it. Don't be shy, Ryan. Any other questions? Yes. Hi, I'm Sky. Um, so I know each of you have talked about how um, the food industry is very heavily male dominated, um, which we had a lot of issues with like police social harassment. Um, what is like one piece of advice that you would give to young women wanting to continue to pursue this industry? I'll have to say something about this one. <laughs> um, just don't stop talking about it because, like I was saying before, it's inconvenient for other people, but like if, if we really want to change the culture and make this an industry, like just reinvent the industry as something that's not just completely male dominated, then people need to be uncomfortable and sit and listen to the story of somebody else and what happened to them. And it's just, it's so important and I, it's just keep talking. Just don't let them convince you that it's unprofessional to talk about it because it's not. It's it's just un it's inconvenient for them, and they phrase it as being unprofessional, but that's just so not true. So just keep telling the truth. You know what I mean? So we don't have a lot of experience with this. I am. So for me, I. What I can offer is just to feedback, like keep talking about it, but also just support find resources and your other women. Like I'm willing to be listening here, and I know anyone else in this industry would be willing to follow them. And, and find a support system of other women owned businesses, I think, so that you can have those conversations because they will understand what you're going through and it'll help you to feel like, okay, I'm not alone. I might be a minority in the industry, but I'm not alone. And being a minority in the industry doesn't mean that I still can't have a powerful impact. Yeah, I think it's important to like find other females in the industry and also find other female leaders who will champion you and will listen and to not stop talking about it. That's super important. We seem to attract all the good jobs every week. I don't know what it is. They come out of the woodwork and we just have tons of applications from all women. So that's kind of cool to see that. I think they feel like it's a really safe space because we are all female. In that. So that's an interesting to see too because I've always been like one of the only female minors. Yeah, it's kind of cool to see that change. Yes. So thank you guys very much. Um, it's really awesome to have such an open conversation about all of these topics. Uh, at the beginning, you talked about like you guys got into your particular uh, business and in the industry, and then we talked about a lot of like, the downsides of it. But maybe then on a positive note, uh, what do you go next every day after dealing with some of these difficult things, whether it be supply chain or maybe really potential rising management challenges? What do you go next? Just want to cook. Just love food. Um, always have, always will. And also, like, it pisses me off when uh, people get away with things that they shouldn't. So I guess I'm like, I'm like a revenge chef. You want me to shut up? You want me to go away? You don't want me to ask the hard questions? But like, it's so fun to do that for me. And it's also important. And so I guess that's my answer to that. <laughs> so my experience is a little unique in having inherited a business. Um, but recently one of my family members showed a picture of my great grandfather in an apron in front of one of our first locations. Um, like a sign that said like tamales and chorizo on the back and then his wife making tamales. So I'm just like super proud. Um, so that's a piece. Do you want to continue doing this? Because it's hard. And, like, I would love to punch in and punch out and have a lunch break, like a real lunch break. Um, but just, I'm just really proud and really fortunate. But also, part of what makes it easier is having to have other women who want to see me succeed. So they, 
when I first took the leap of like leaving my nine to five and going full time into this business, there was women behind me who like I believe in you. I think we can do this. You have a great idea. So, um, yeah, having cheerleaders and we all love food. So. <laughs> Um, so, absolutely, being a foodie is, is a big thing, so it kind of motivates you, but I would also say it's the people. Um, you know, part of my business and part of why I do what I do is for health. I don't want people to be healthy, so whenever I come across someone, I go to the taste of fam, you know, whenever I meet someone for the first time, it's like, I haven't eaten, you know, ice cream or pops I haven't eaten in years because of dairy. I'm so thankful that you have something I can eat that. Brings me joy. I really, I love being able to have something, number one, that, you know, aligns up with my vision of keeping people healthy, but then at the same time, not making people feel excluded because of the way that they eat. I think a large part of it for me is I love creating things with my hands, and I didn't realize that until I got into food. I like seeing an end product. And the fact that I get to watch someone enjoy it at the same time, like, brings me joy every single day. Um, like, seeing the community of people in our coffee shop and just being able to, like, watch people enjoy a thing together um, makes me so happy. And it makes me want to come back every single day, Pre keep creating good products and, you know, keep up our standards and also just, like, keep meeting people. I do love the service side of it as well. Yes. Um, so I know you guys have mentioned having resources and having people to help you and help guide you. How um, important do you find it to almost find like a, a right hand woman, you know, having somebody that you can start improving with, helping grow and helping you grow in the future of the industry? So I still feel like I'm still learning a lot, so I'm relying on those women who help me along the way. Um, but that's when we, for, when my husband and I decided like this is what we wanted to do, we had a very open conversation about what our vision was like, and that was one of the first things that we mentioned. Like, yeah, there's a ton of like service restaurants where you are, but do we want to promote those other businesses? Absolutely. So that was our vision for taking this on. It's like exactly what I said, there's enough room for all of us at the table. So I don't feel like I'm quite ready yet to take someone under my wing, so to speak, but when the opportunity presents itself, like, absolutely, because I would be here if it weren't for those women who are like, you can do this, we got you, this is where you gotta go. So that's something that is really important and something that I'm really passionate about. Um, I think it's important to do that. You almost, um, it's like my goddaughter is kind of almost like my way woman um, uh, because she loves cooking, she loves that whole piece of understanding and learning. And I realized that I might not know enough yet, but she can watch me as I learn. And, you know, some of the things she helps me at the market, and sometimes when we're, we're there together, she's like, oh, we should make this dessert next time. I'm like, okay. Um, Ingredients, so I'm like, well, we'll work it out. So I think it's important um, at, at that stage when you feel that you're ready. And for me, I take advantage of knowing, um, ha having an understanding of what I know can help someone else. Whether or not I've mastered something yet, I'm okay when you see it be like trip over and fall on my face, but because I'm getting back up. But I think that it's important to bring, have someone alongside with you. That's kind of what my goddaughter is with me, and, and I think that um, through that, it's given her more confidence so that she can, you know, go into that field as well. Uh, on kind of like the other end of that, I don't think I would be in this industry if I didn't have a woman do that for me. Uh, she, I was super young, had no experience, and just kind of uh, was able to grow with her company and learn so much from her. Um, which I, you know, got me to where I am today was super inspirational. So I would say I'm not at that position where I have, you know, somebody, of course I have a lot of support, but um, it got me where I am today. So I think it's extremely important in this industry to have someone that you 
look up to or someone that kind of takes you under. All right, so I think we're going to wrap it up now. We do have some networking afterwards, so feel free to come up and ask us any questions, follow-ups, things like that. I want to give a huge round of applause to all of our panelists for their time. Thank you.